Good morning. Good morning and welcome. This is Mr. B's Sunday School. I am Mr. B, also known as Bruce Ehrlich. And today we are here to consider a short passage from the Gospel of John that most people refer to as Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Now, why would Jesus want to wash the dirty feet of the disciples? And why would Jesus, the teacher and Lord of his disciples, need to wash his disciples' feet? We'll find out in today's reading. But the first thing we like to do in this class is pray. Thank you, Lord, God and Father in heaven above, that you can do all things and that you have chosen to send your Son, Jesus, to teach us by showing us so that we can know what it is that you want us to know and that most importantly that we can know who you are and what you're like and so that we can be like you. Bless this, the reading now of your holy word, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we got a uh, class question for you this time. Starting out with a class question. Can seeing, that is seeing something with our physical eyes, become a bridge to understanding knowing or perceiving something mentally or spiritually. Have you ever heard someone say, unless I can see it with my own eyes, I won't believe it? I think we all have. Our quote today is from Charles Spurgeon, and he says, if you wish to know God, you must know his word. If you wish to perceive his power, you must see how he works by his word. If you wish to know his purpose before it comes to pass, you can only discover it by his word. At this time in Jesus' ministry on earth, he knows that he is about to be offered as the Passover lamb. Matter of fact, within 24 hours of the time of this story, he is offered as the Passover lamb that will take away the sin of the world. Our first reading today is from the Gospel of John, and we're in chapter 13, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Now, before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that his hour had come, and it was time for him to leave this world and return to the Father. Having greatly loved his own who were in the world, he loved them and continuously loves them with his perfect love to the end eternally. It was during supper when the devil had already put the thought of betraying Jesus into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, that Jesus, knowing that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was now returning to God, got up from supper, took off his outer robe, 
and taking a servant's towel, he tied it around his waist. Okay. Wait, what? Jesus knew that God the Father had put everything into his hands? And Jesus knew that he had come from God and was about to return to God? And this is how he responds? He takes off his robe and kneels down on the floor to wash the disciples' dirty feet? Got a reading for you from the New Living Translation. And we are in the Gospel of Luke. And we're at chapter 22. And we're at, starting at verse 24. Speaking of the disciples. Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them, in this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here, for I am among you as one who serves. Now, we know that animal sacrifices can never take away our sins. Got a reading for you from Hebrews. And we're at Hebrews chapter 10. We're starting at verse 4. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ enters into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but instead you have prepared a body for me to offer. Okay. Now, the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is the most well-documented historical fact of all time. However, a person can only die once. Therefore, Jesus did many things visually where everyone could see what he was doing and understand who he was. That is to say, to know who he was by what they saw with their physical eyes. Washing feet is no miracle, but it was shocking to at least one disciple. Was Peter the only disciple in the room who wasn't so busy arguing who would be the greatest among them, that he noticed what Jesus was doing? Got a reading for you from the English Standard Version. We're at John 13, and we're starting at verse 5. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that, he, that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, 
what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you, for he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. Okay, got a little note for you. It says, Jesus applies the foot washing in another way. Those who have been washed through Jesus' once-for-all death also need daily cleansing of their sins, symbolized by their frequent need to wash their feet. It is apparent that Jesus applies the foot washing figuratively, since he says, not all are clean, referring to Judas. But clearly, he cleaned Judas' feet as well, because Judas is not spiritually cleansed. Unlike Peter, he does not have a share with Jesus. Okay. Get a reading from the Amplified Study Bible. We're at 1 John 1 9. It says, If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. A little note says, to confess is to agree with God, to admit that we are sinners in need of his mercy. If a believer confesses his or her specific sins to God, he will cleanse all unrighteousness from that person. Forgiveness and cleansing are guaranteed because God is faithful to his promises. Those promises are legitimated because God is just. God can maintain his perfect character and yet forgive us because of the perfect and righteous sacrifice of Jesus, his own son. Okay. It wasn't comfortable for Peter to see Jesus, his Lord and Master, kneeling on the floor to wash his feet. <clears throat> and it certainly wasn't comfortable for the disciples and followers of Jesus to see Jesus dying, killed, and crucified as if he was some kind of a criminal. What did Jesus' disciples and followers know based on on what they were seeing. How did what Jesus' followers see become a gateway to grasp spiritual truth, reality, from a physical plane? Got a reading from the New International Version. We're at John 13. We're starting at verse 12. 
When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. <clears throat> you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I your Lord and teacher have washed your feet. You also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. A little note here that says, Jesus was the model servant, and he showed his servant attitude to his disciples. Washing guests' feet was a job for a household servant to carry out when guests arrived. But Jesus wrapped a towel around his waist as the lowest, lowliest servant would do and washed and dried his disciples' feet. If even he, God in the flesh, is willing to serve, we, his followers, must also be servants willing to serve in any way that glorifies God. Are you willing to follow Christ's example of serving? Whom can you serve today? There is a special blessing for those who not only agree that humble service is Christ's way, but who also Follow through and do it. Got a little bit of a class roundup for you. Seeing Jesus wash their feet when the disciples were all busy arguing about who would be the greatest was truly a moment where what they saw became a bridge to what they knew, well, for everyone except Judas. Judas <clears throat> was with the other disciples and saw all the same things that the other disciples saw, but did not, did not become aware, did not perceive, did not appreciate and did not put into practice what he had learned from being around Jesus. Got a reading from the New Living Translation and we're at 1 John 3.10. Now, oh, sorry. So now we can tell who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. Jesus gave us an example that we should do as Jesus has done for us. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your good word that can lead us into all righteousness. Bless the reading of your word for each of us this week. Help us to not only be seers, but doers of your word as we serve others, and especially 
those who you have called fellow believers. We thank you for these things. We thank you for the truth. Help us to be those who meditate on the truth and those who put the truth into practice daily, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, have a good week. Hope you enjoyed the serenade of the baby chickens this morning. That's what we heard in the background here. <laughs>